Welcome back to the adventure. This is Adam, and today we're customizing the user interface in our Windows 3.11 installation. We'll get started right after this. <music> Default settings are boring. Thankfully, there are a few things that can be done to change that. One simple place to start is the desktop background. Let's open the control panel, and we'll select desktop. In this applet, we have some settings that can be changed, like application alt tab switching. We can turn this feature on or off. You can switch between windows by pressing alt tab like in modern versions of windows. This feature is also available in the DOS shell. Here's a card linking to the video where we talked about that. We also have a few screen savers, some settings for icon spacing and the grid icons aligned to, and of course the setting we came here for, the wallpaper. Let's start by setting it to something like Castle. These options for wallpaper are all small images that are intended to be repeated across the desktop. With the Tile setting, these wallpapers are a nice start and a step up from a solid color background, but I think we can do something even more personalized. I have an image here that I've edited in MS Paint as I could not find a way to save the image as a 256 color bitmap in Photoshop. I've already copied the file to our Windows directory, so we can go back into Desktop and pick it here from the list. And there we go, a nice personalized background. Next, we need to do something about that color scheme. From the Control Panel, we can go into Color. Here we have the options for changing the color of elements in the user interface. The color schemes are not all that great, and some are rather loud and really do not appeal to me. For demonstration, I have a text file here with some additional color schemes in it. We'll go here to the A drive. These are comma-separated hex values. It tells Windows what color to assign to what elements. We can copy these strings of text and paste them into the control.ini file under the color scheme header. Here we are right under the color schemes header. We can paste this in. And don't forget to save the document. Now when we go back to color, we'll have those options here up at the top. I am going to select OS2 Warp and give it a black background. Another element we could change is the fonts and the user interface. For this, we'll go back to our text file. and I've selected an item here that we can copy. And this goes into the win.ini file. Here we are in win.ini. We're going to scroll down to the Windows section and we will paste those items in here. So we're going with an MS Serif font, size 12. I apologize if I mispronounced that correctly. And back in our text file here, we have a couple changes that we can make to the icons as well. So we'll copy that, Alt-Tab back to WinINI, and this time under the desktop header. Right here, we can go Edit Paste. So what this is doing is changing the font on the icons to a sans serif size 8. The style is going to be normal. Uh, one here would indicate bold. Uh, they are going to wrap, which is one, a zero would turn wrapping off. And we're also changing the status bar font to Arial size 12. So we are going to save the file and restart, and we'll see what that looks like when we get back. All right, we are back after a restart with the new font here in our title bars and on our icons. 
and in our status bar. So we can actually use any font that we would like as a system font by using a tool called SysFont, and the link will be in the description for that app. I've already installed the Microsoft True Font Type Pack, so I do have a couple additional fonts that did not come with Windows. So we'll go into the File Manager and to our A drive, of course, where I have that disk, and we're going to run the SysFont app. Okay, now I could be wrong, but just for good measure, I'm going to go back in here to our WinINI file, and I'm going to take out the lines we put in that changed the system font, uh, because this uh, SysFont app actually uses the uh, system.ini file for that. Uh, so we're going to go in here, and we're going to remove this, and save best practice is to always keep a backup copy of these files when you're working with them. As you see, I have several different copies of these files, mostly ones created by programs that went to make changes to the file. But uh, for good measure, yes, I do like to keep a backup copy of these around. So we've undone that uh, manual change we did to the WinINI file. And we'll go back and run SysFont. Okay, this is a relatively simple application. We're going to go to select font, and I want, uh, ooh, let's say, uh, Bookman Old Style Bold, and I'm going to go, uh, let's stick with size 12, actually. Good bold font. Do I want bold? No, I'll just stick with bold. Okay, so I have selected my font. I can save my font. Uh, and I'm going to call that Bookman Old Style Font. Uh, yes, go ahead and make those changes for me. And then when we restart, we will have our new font in the title bar. There are a few miscellaneous applications I'd like to discuss here real quick, starting with all 3D. So when working with these applications, there's usually a text file that explains how to install them. In this case, it's all 3D.txt. And here are the installation instructions. Okay, so first of all, they are very easy, which is good. So step one, copy ctl3d.dll to your Windows system directory. Do not overwrite the file if a newer one is already there. I think I can do that. ctl3d, and then we can go file, copy, and type in C Windows system. Good, one's already there. Uh, so no, this one is in fact older, so we are going to say, no, I don't want to replace that file. Okay. So I'll tab and see what's next. Step two, uh, copy these files to any but the same directory, uh, already done. Uh, and then we'll create a new item in the startup group. Okay, so this program group here, startup, anything you add in this group is going to start with the computer. So we can go to file, new, and program item, and then we'll go to browse and select the file I already put in apps, all 3D, all 3D.exe, good. So now, when we start the computer, it's going to start uh, all 3D for us. Uh, I believe we could launch it now, and that should also have the same effect. Okay. So we're going to restart the computer in just a moment and see all of those changes. The next item I would like to show is K-Frame. So we'll go back to File Manager and uh, K-Frame, which I've actually put here under apps, K-Frame. Yes. So we are also going to put that into a program group, which is what the installation instructions say. So file new program item and go to browse. And in this case, it's under apps. 
and kframe, kframe.exe, and Bob's your uncle. So both of those items will start with the PC. Uh, this one I know for a fact we can start now, and it's just going to add that little animation, a little, just a little different than what we had before, just kind of this empty box that grows, and then pop, we have the window open. I, I rather like that. Okay, so we'll give the computer one final restart and see what all of these changes are. We are back after the restart. We have our new font here, courtesy of uh, SysFon. And uh, again, all of the apps that I'm showing here today will have the links down in the description. Uh, and I really enjoy KFrame, just that little little animation that it does when you're minimizing and maximizing windows and you can apply these to menus and all sorts of things uh, you can configure the app by going into the startup group and to kframe and you have this menu here of all the wonderful things that you can do with it um, it's like a, a fist bump with some fireworks at the end I, I really like it it's different than the normal window behavior you get with windows 3.11 I am still in search of some icon packs that I like and some replacement sounds for Windows, but those items will have to wait for a future video. For now, that concludes our look at customizing Windows. Subscribe for more great content every Thursday. Thanks for stopping by. See you next video.